with uh, my good mate Robbie Ginjul. Best he's, mate. Yeah, best mate Robbie G Ginjul. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> and um, yeah, he's a live muso, plays a lot in Wollongong, so just thought I'd introduce him and uh, this will get started. Um, so, what kind of music are you listening to at the moment? Like, what can you not get enough of? Um, I'm getting real back into like heaps more jazzy sort of rock yeah. sort of music, but like, um, so like Lime Cordiali, but more yeah. like classic blues sort of stuff. Oh, yeah. Just from like, I don't know, just a really big fan of all the, um, the guitar sort of movements they're doing. It's real yeah. funky and just like, I don't know, hasn't really been sort of recreated that well since, uh, yeah. Yeah, so what like bands are they? Sort of, yeah. Oh, it was real like, <laughs> It's more just like the guitarists that are sort of involved with like the bigger names. Like there's a lot of the guitarists that used to play with Ray Charles. Uh, Ray Charles. Yeah. Um, so I was a big fan of his when I was in year 12. Yeah. Um, and it's just the sort of way that they can make attitude with just the guitar. Like it's a concept that's been around for ages, but it's just, I don't know, that was like the more sort of innovative sort of ways back then. It's just really yeah. cool to see how they sort of went from like voices to guitars as like actual balonic instruments. Yeah. It's really, yeah, been... Deep into it for a bit, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so with that, what are your sort of um, personal sort of biggest music influences? Um, vocally, I used to listen to a lot of Matt Corby when I was learning how to sing. Yeah. And so, like, like technically he's a pretty perfect singer in terms of like what, you know, pitch and vibrato and his yeah. like expansive range and his different ways of um, expressing stuff like with his chest and his head and his falsetto and stuff. Okay. Um, and so it's just, it, it was really good to sort of learn how to sing properly was by listening to heaps of him. So yeah. I sort of copied him a lot of ways in that. Um, but having said that, listening to a lot of Ray Charles at the same time, I think I sort of put a lot more emphasis on um, like not being perfectly turned yeah. out on some like things to add a bit more like attitude to it. Yeah. Just because, you know, I'm not Matt Corby, so I can't be yeah. that good at yeah. doing Matt Corby. So I sort of had a commit to that but um I don't know that's yeah vocally musically more like Lime Cordiali these days and yeah. a lot of Bon Iver just because he's okay, uh, yeah. just wildly different in yeah. the way he sort of uses vocals and instruments as the, like the wrong parts of bits like he's, yeah. he uses a lot of brass as chorus instruments rather than um you know like strings and stuff like he yeah, okay. plays the same sort of chords but through a whole bunch of like trombones and shit yeah yeah that's yeah it's just like that kind of yeah, that's different cool. sort of yeah. things. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and just sort of learning yeah, that. Like, yeah, a couple of different styles as well. That's it. Yeah, and that sort of influenced a lot more of um, what me and my friend Otis have been sort of making a lot more music. Is yeah, a bit bit more wacky sort of. Yeah, you know, out there. Yeah, just breaking like, from like the sort of local, you know, just surf rocky scene. We just yeah, like I don't know, just making it a bit more funky. Yeah, you know, just yeah, playing things a bit differently. I don't know, trying to trying to be unique. Or yeah, whatever. yeah, that's, that's pretty mad. Um, so when did you start performing and what was that like? Um, the first performance I can remember doing was a Holiday by Green Day yeah. in like year <laughs> four okay. in front of my class. But um, yeah. no, nah, performing as like a genuine musician. I started busking when I was like 17 oh, okay. um, over Christmas and New Year's. Um, and just like saw that I could make heaps of money from that in like no time at all because yeah. over New Year's everyone just wants to oh, get money. Yeah. So whenever I just went to town I'd just bust <laughs> for like, I just would bring my guitar all the time because if I needed money for the movies or something I'd just go and bust for half. Oh money. really? Dead set, I needed money for like <laughs> going to get pissed that night actually and we just we were like shit no one's got 50 bucks for a case so I was like alright let me just go bust for <laughs> 30 minutes and then we just really? get a bunch of money. Yeah it was sick. Um, but yeah and but like I don't think I got a professional gig at an actual pub until I was Oh, it was just before I was 18 actually, at Three Chimneys, it was my first okay. time. Yeah. And, um, and Red Square, soon after I turned 18, I used to play there like once a month, and now I'm mm. there yeah, pretty much every week, so. Yeah. It was pretty fun. Yeah. So how was that? Was it like, sort it of was, exciting or a bit scary? Or? Yeah, it was different. Like, playing to a bunch of people who weren't specifically there to see you. Yeah. Just like, at a bar. Yeah. That was real different, because before that, you just had like a bunch of school performances where you were just playing in front of people. Yeah, okay. Um, that were like there to watch a kid perform. Yeah. Whereas now it was like, oh shit, how do I grab people's yeah, attention? Get an atmosphere. Yeah, like exactly. And it's different to busking too, because busking people can just pass you by. Like, yeah. You like you pass by a busker all the time. And you're like, yeah. oh, he probably doesn't give a shit. But 
like being in a bar, it's like for a 17 year old kid who had never played in a bar before, I was like, oh shit, I can't even drink here. Like, the fuck am I doing yeah, playing yeah, yeah. guitar for these people? Um, but yeah, no, honestly, after about two or three songs, because a bunch of like my family and my friends were there, yeah. um, it just got fun. I just started doing busking, but just in front of people, and it just, yeah. like, that's, that's the best part about music, I think, is actually getting to perform it and have fun to do yeah. performing. Yeah, yeah. And as you get better, it becomes easier, which means you can do some more stuff, which means it's more fun you get to have. And it's oh, just, yeah. Constant, yeah. Yeah, like for, that two-way playback as well, sort of thing. That's it, yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, so what kind of audiences sort of do you play for now, and um, how's that, maybe, what you've already said, how that's changed since you started? Yeah, well, I'd say at the moment, um, because I have, like, a weekly gig at um, one of the pubs in town, it's sort of, every semester, it's sort of like a hit and miss as to whether or not the new set of, um, like, uni students will that'll be like their pub for the yeah, semester. Yeah, yeah, Because you get that like, you know, you night every Wednesday, like first years will come and they'll usually find like one pub and they're like, whoa, shit. And yeah. usually it's Redsburg because they're like, it's like $5 vodkas yeah. and this dollar jugs of beer. So they usually come into there. Yeah. Um, so usually it's like for 17, 18, 19 year olds is yeah. like the, the key crowd. But the people who usually stay at the pub longer tend to be like 40, 50 year olds. So you do have to yeah. chuck in a few like classics in there, but yeah, classics yeah, yeah. that young people will still know. Yeah. So you sort of have to, if you're doing like cover songs and shit. Yeah, that's um, cool. Playing to your own, um, like original stuff. Um, probably like, honestly the same sort of demographic, I think, is like the young people, because that's sort of who hold the sway of whether or not you're going to be popular or not. Yeah. Because these people like who are, you know, 18, 19, like they're going to be deciding what is good and what isn't good in like five, yeah. six years. Yeah, and kind of... Um what they would design as like popular songs that you'd play yeah you know, like, like, yeah like an older exactly older and like what sort of yeah. motifs have remained constant um through those like generations and i don't know just stuff that you need to yeah sort of appeal like your subject matter as well yeah it's very complex so, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> as one knows yeah um yeah so what are a couple of songs that you enjoy playing then like what are some favorites to sort of i don't know uh, i've got some but Shit, like it just gets to the point where he's, oh. Or do you kind of change it up a fair bit? To a... See, it depends on what kind of gig I'm playing. Okay. If, I'm, if I'm playing my own music, um, there's like one or two that I do prefer playing, but if it comes to like just covers, it, it depends on the mood, hey, like, yeah. cause if you're at a wedding, you can play like a really slow, like a really fast song, you play it really slow, and if you get like people in a pretty ambient mood, yeah. you can really dig yeah. that ambient sort of vibe, but then if you're at... It just sort of comes to you. Yeah, exactly, but then if you're in like Red Square and you got, you know, 80 people in that front room and they're all jumping around, I'm not going to start playing some yeah. real stupid ambient shit, so... Yeah, okay. It's a, yeah, it depends, like I enjoy playing like heaps of songs, um, but yeah, it just depends on the sort of mood that the places in the sort of yeah how much like fun yeah, yeah, yeah. i'd say more like more like the the jazzy sort of rocky stuff or just like making stuff playing in a style that's like jazzy rocky just yeah bit, just know, so, yeah well you, that's another thing of like performing live is you get everyone's mm. favorite songs that aren't sort of like for that um live acoustic sort of yeah genre, and so you've got to get out how to yeah, figure exactly. it out yeah, people see what they know, but in a different sort of lens. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. Obviously, they probably like that when they, yeah, when they get that. Yeah. Yeah. So, what's what's like, you probably, you go to? Oh. Yeah, well, what's start, your, re- what's I, your first one? I recently started um, doing a different cover of Black and Gold. Yeah. Which is pretty fun. Um, people get down to that. I actually had this one bloke, this one Indian dude um, request that I play... Uh, that song yeah. because he wanted to impress his ladies he was with. <laughs> and so I just I just played it like that way and he just ended up like really happy he tipped me like yeah. 50 bucks Fuck. and I was just like well that's sick and he just kept like at me all night and then eventually yeah. I, don't, I don't know if he went home with them or not there was about six of them <laughs> I don't know if he went home with one or two or three of them or two short but yeah. that was a pretty funny night yeah well that would be a favourite song if you can get that to happen I guess it's a pretty good accolade to have yeah, that's pretty fun. Yeah. If, yeah, sounds very. Those sort of qualifications. Yeah. Um, and so, what are some sort of like Eureka type moments? Um, was it be like maybe playing a song you really wanted to know and sort of finally sort of nailing that, or maybe like one or two live performances, like sets that sort of um, yeah, someone just really clicked in maybe. Or something there's like been that. a few, like just when you, everything just sort of flows and clicks into place yeah. and. Um, there was one time I was playing 
this version of uh, Stop Me, Stop You by Nick Murphy. Yeah. Because I only really know the four chords at the end because I ended yeah. up actually writing a song using those same four chords but like differently later on. So I just was like, oh, because I was just thinking about playing my song and I was like, oh shit, I can probably just play that entire Nick Murphy song in that really slow sort of form because it's a very okay, yeah. slow piano bit at the end. And so I just started playing that while I was playing at a pub in town somewhere and there was only about 15, 20 people at it. Mm. Um, but the whole thing was just quiet and I had the loop pedal going and like just heaps of vibrato on and when I've got the stage pass working, which it never fucking does, it's got a really, really good vocal reverb. And um, yeah. yeah, it was just mad. Everyone was just really like into it and yeah. I was super into it. It was super automatic and um, yeah, it was just, when I finished like everyone, like there's people like actually crying and yeah. It was just, it was weird. It was weird. Like it was one of those times yeah. that like you, you don't you don't want to talk yourself up, but it was more just like yeah. everybody was just enjoying it. It wasn't even like me doing a thing and everyone it was just like yeah. I was I was just happy to be there as anyone else was. Yeah. Um and oh, probably one other time when I was playing at Lagoon for a lunch uh Sunday lunch slot, there was this kid who had his like fifth birthday yeah. over at this table. And um I was playing the whole time and it's kind of cool that sort of area has a lot of room for like if there's a young kids thing like all the kids are sort of they've got a good like 10 minute oh, yeah. area sort of play around yeah, and yeah, everyone cool. can see you and hear you in the whole restaurant and there's yeah. like 400 people in this restaurant on a Sunday lunch mm. um, yeah. and yeah as I was like uh, playing a song this kid came up and put uh, five dollars in my um, case and I was like oh that's pretty cute his yeah. dad's giving him five bucks to come run over and you know chuck in and now he feels yeah because that's how you used to get people busking you'd always go for the kids yeah, because <laughs> the parents yeah. would just be like, "Oh, go on then, give yeah. him five bucks." And right, yeah. You look for the rich ones because they give you like fifty bucks. It's sick. <laughs> um, and it was like the kid, yeah. Um, and yeah, so I've just kept playing, not thinking much of it. And I'll finish the song up, and the mum comes over to me just as she was leaving, and she was like, yeah. "Oh, we weren't going to tell you because you were in the middle of your song, but um, now you've finished." That was five dollars out of his birthday money that he just got, oh. and I was just like, "Oh <laughs> no!" I just I, I had to stop playing for about two minutes. So I was just like, "Oh, oh. don't cry." <laughs> yeah, wow. Yeah, that it was sick, crazy. and I've, I've still got that five dollar note in my little book that I write on my lyrics and shit in. So. Oh, man. Yeah, so that that was that was a sick moment. Yeah, man. and that was at the pub that actually wow. like because I used to work while I played there as well. Okay, so everyone yeah. who was like a waiter there it was a sick atmosphere. Yeah, well, so it was kind of like. A really like homey sort of feel um yeah i just got this five dollar note from this kid that yeah would have just gotten that for like from his grandma or something yeah yeah and i was yeah. like oh man that's that's, that's sick. crazy like yeah maybe he'll like music for the rest of his life because that i don't know it'd be sick yeah but yeah kind of was a cool little moment yeah that's crazy mm. um so sort of um was it ever not sort of like a bit scary or daunting because like Obviously, it sounds crazy fun now for you. But like, was oh. there ever sort of that moment where you're like, maybe your first few, you're like, oh shit, like. I mean, honestly, every time you get up to sing, especially singing, um, you're nervous. There's, yeah. Like, well, that's true for me anyway. But I don't think anyone ever gets up a hundred percent confident that yeah. they're not gonna fuck up. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, I, I play like playing at the pub. I play it every week. Mm. The first song I play, I'm always a bit like. I could still be shit. Like yeah. this could be like a really shit gig. This could still go horribly. Yeah. But it's more just like the sort of automatic body thing where you go, you just sort of push through it. Um, yeah. But yeah, definitely at first it was it was a lot harder. Like you took a lot longer to sort of ease into it. Yeah. Um, I think in year four when I had to dress up as Freddie Mercury in like a fluoro <laughs> silk tight suit with like a fake mustache in front of a bunch of people and saying we are the champions. That's yeah. sort of after yeah. that you can't really get much more embarrassing. <laughs> yeah. So, it wasn't really an option of like, <laughs> these people are going to look at me and think I'm an idiot. Yeah. It was more just like a personal idea of failure. Um, yeah, yeah. Because, yeah, people definitely looked at me and thought I'm an idiot. I'm not afraid of that. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it definitely has gotten a lot easier lately, especially. Um, okay, yeah. And since doing music at university, I feel a lot more confident in my like actual technical ability. Yeah. Because before it was much more just like self-taught. Yeah, because I know like I can play guitar and like, maybe sing a tiny little bit. Yeah. But, like, you like five minutes with you and I'm just kind of like whoa like this guy's on a whole other level of like it's just it's one of those things that you just there's definitely a point where you find that thing that makes you sound really good yeah and you just explore the shit out of that I think yeah, yeah. And what, or just whatever makes it you sound good to you yeah I think and just sort of really exploring that yeah. ideas and like what like what your favourite artists do that you like yeah and how you can sort of recreate that in your own way yeah it's just a really cool 
you know, because you're never going to be somebody else. So yeah. trying to, so you can all the time like listen to that base what you you know yeah. you're sort of creating out of that. But yeah, you've always got to find that one thing that you kind of go, oh, that like I sounded really good, like better yeah. than anyone else okay. at that just then. Yeah. Like, so I what's been a fuck, like a few of those for you? Oh shit! I had to sound like, I had to top that sound like an asshole. <laughs> um, um, there was a point in time when I was busking that I, yeah. that I started like really sort of belting and sort of ex belting I'd say yeah. because my technique was so bad back then um, but just sort of exploring how much more power I could put into expand my range Yeah, and that's how you really discover like how to properly project is when you've yeah. got just an open thing and yeah. in the mall like right under the the bridge was where I sat like just in front of the amphitheater okay. oh yeah. shit it's not the amphitheater anymore it's like a yeah, stage with like, but anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As like mad acoustics, like people would hear me all the way down the bottom because okay, I was yeah. just because I was classically taught right before that, so I knew how to like project in the sense of I could just stand there in the front of the microphone while someone played a piano. Like, okay. It sound nice. Yeah. But I'd never like properly had to like reach out and when you do it yeah. for like four hours, you need to do it properly. Like you need yeah. to be able to feel it fluently because otherwise you're dead by forty minutes in. So okay, yeah. I would bust for like five hours and I'd just be like belting this whole time, and you couldn't do that unless you really had like an ability to sort of get air in through your diaphragm, push it out properly in a way. Yeah, okay, you know? yeah. Um, and yeah, I think that was really the point where I was like, oh shit, I can really like do some cool shit with my voice yeah, that I didn't realize I could do yeah, before. Just go like harder. Yeah, just yeah. like, I think the training really push helps. It a bit more. Yeah, but just, and also to stay like on the note as well. Is it yeah. really, you know, the point of singing yeah, is to yeah, make yeah, the yeah. note <laughs> properly. And it's, you know, doing that while also doing some other shit to your voice to make it sound funky is yes. just, yeah, the ability to sort of manipulate your built-in instrument is very, very cool, Yeah, I think. And yeah, I just I love that. Yeah. It's super easy, you can do it all the time. I just sing yeah. everywhere I go because it's just so much fun. Yeah. Jeez, that's awesome. Um, so, it, did you kind of think of it as like, you go down to the to go bask for a day or something and you just work on like maybe trying to figure this sort of thing out or yeah no fully yeah because you yeah, can yeah, sort of it, do yeah, for yeah well, it's, it's a practice session yeah but just yeah. in front of people and you're getting paid yeah <laughs> it's right. mad yeah. like and if you you know if your practice is going real well they're going to give you more money like, yeah that was the way I saw it so that's why I was really focused on doing things like properly like I think yeah um it wasn't like a loop pedal that I really got half decent at you know not just sort of playing chords rhythmically cool yeah because that was sort of how I well that's what I kind of did on this on the um, when I was busking because I'd just sing like you know a chorus of a song yeah but I'd fuck up you know the rhythm of the guitar so oh, it was like yeah. more like you know like Mumford and Sonsy yeah yeah but then I could also do like you know the kind of cool jazzy like the one two three clip one two three clip yeah thing. um and just like just because you're out there for fucking four hours and <laughs> if you're a 17 year old boy you've only got about 40 minutes worth of material so you yeah, can play the yeah. same song like eight <laughs> times. Like I reckon I played Hallelujah yeah. at least seven <laughs> times when I was out there. Um, so I don't like playing it anymore because I'm just like, fuck, you're an arse, I'll stop playing Hallelujah. <laughs> um, but having said that, it got me really good at just being able to do four simple chords, but just in a way that sounds a bit cooler than just going, dun, 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 yeah. that sort of thing. Yeah. And, it's, and that's why I like that jazzy blues guitar as we were talking about before. Because yeah. It's just the guitar still says something while you're saying something and it's just... Yeah, well... um. Mm. Even just something I know, like Mick Jagger sort of just said, it's like all about like the right hand, sort yeah. of just like getting your own rhythm and... He's about it, yeah. Yeah. He's got, he's got his own fucking funky yeah. ass rhythm that good. Yeah, and there's um, it's not really like a whole lot of other things that just sort of make simpler chords sound really, yeah. just sort of jump out at you. Kind yeah, of. it's just that like really sort of wacky syncopation sort of yeah. idea where it's not, it's a bit interesting, like it's not crazy, yeah. like you've heard it before, but like... It's a bit weird. It's just sort of like really stylish, kind of. Yeah, 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 fully. Just yeah, different lens. Yeah. Well, I think that just about does it. I reckon that was awesome. So, That's cool, man. Yeah, it's only it's always great to hear you talk about music. Oh, you just get right in there. You I know, know I'm right. you always, yeah, you always know more than me, so it's always. Oh, I just love it. I love the philosophy. Get a lot of help, so. yeah. yeah. Cheers for. That's a good. Jumping in front of the camera. Appreciate. It. That's right, man. No worries. Thank Cheers. you. Cheers.